What do you got? This just came in the mail yesterday. Super stroke. Mm -hmm. Look at this up here. Tell me what that is. They're calling it the wrist lock. Oh, what do you do with that? Okay, so left, so it goes like this, right? And then you put your left hand like that, and then kind of lock your wrist in, I think. This, uh -huh. is, this is an untrained, this is my first time seeing this thing. So I think it's something like that, and then kind of lock it in. I feel like this is gonna be the game changer. This is what you've needed your whole life. I think you're, I think you're you feeling something. the same way. What? Which one of your, which one of your 47 putters are you going to put that in? You know, that is always the toughest decision to make. It is. Which yeah. one are you going to jack up next? Hey, now, no. What do you think? Would you, what do you think about this idea? Oh, I like it. Um, I think if you, especially if you like doing that, that wrist locking method or you've tried it, it seems like a winner. It sounds like they've built the perfect foam grip for you. Like to give it a shot. I think you need I to do like you need do to like get those because they're not heavy. We need to get you one of these so you can we can see what you think. I'm curious. Okay. Send it over. Okay, there you go. Here you go. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Real tray to chew it, so he loves rappers. He doesn't look like a rapper dog, but he loves to just like roll his face around on it. Anyway. No, I like that. I think that's cool. That'll be interesting. Uh, you, I want to see you try it and tell me what yep. you think. I'm going to put on a putter. Today we're talking about all these fine swings and I've deteriorated the video. So all of the guilty are hidden, but uh, what do you think of these follow throughs, Cordy? Uh, I don't like them particularly. No, I see a lot of uh, the, this one right here in particular is one of my favorites. The, the famous pointer dog look. Yes. Yep. Sticking your nose out, aiming, aiming uh, down the fairway. So we wanted, I wanted to talk about uh, something like if you're the, I think this is the very first thing, first skill you should learn as a, as a golfer. So uh, you can start in many different places, but I do want to explain why the follow through is so important and why getting to a spot where your right arm is parallel to the ground, like all these fine people have, and the significance of how you're going to move as you get there and why that's so important. So you don't look like that pointer dog look really starts with like uh, kind of this picture here. We talk about how every tour player's swing is different. I'm going to take a nice little stab at that today. But first, here's the concept. Uh, this is an image from Gears. It's a motion capture. So that's why you see the avatar. You're uh, marking yourself up and the club up. And then you make a swing. And it really measures exactly what you did to uh, within like the width of a piece of paper. So it's uh, very accurate. The highlighted area that the red arrows are drawn to, that would be wherever you would put the, the middle of the grip or about where your hands come together on the shaft. That's what that is tracing. So you can see how from this point on, all the way up to where this person's at now, how that rises. It doesn't continue to go down at all from here before going up. It's just at this point in time, that's where it goes up. And this green arrow is where impact is. So that's where the shaft and the ball uh, actually came into alignment at impact. So you can see how the middle of the grip starts to rise before you, you hit impact. Good with that so far? Got it. Okay, let's get to the good pictures. So while we talk about all the time how all these tour players, or at least we talked about it last week, uh, these tour players have different looking swings. Totally agree with that, mm -hmm. can't argue. We spent an ad nauseum amount of time talking about how the the uh, top of the backswing looked different. Yep. With Matt Wolf, Dustin Johnson. Shaft is in a different spot. How they move their arms is different. But let's get to what they actually do the same because I think yeah. that's the more critical part of all of this. So first, how about we put up a few images? Here's Dustin Johnson. Let's start right now. Let's start with uh, John Rom since I've got him first on my list. I stopped this on the gear system when the uh, the middle of the grip was beginning to or hit its lowest point to the ground. So this is on the way down. Middle of the grip is as close to the turf as it's going to get, and then from there it starts to go up. So there's your image. Good with that one? Yep. Okay, that's John Rom. Here's Ricky Fowler. 
You know, so the club head in both of these pictures, I'll go back up to John Rahm, where that's at, it's uh, bisecting. Let me draw a little bit of an arrow in here. Somewhere right around the top of his right thigh, his trail thigh, where the grip is before it starts to go upward. Here's Ricky Fowler, about the same point in time, and this is well before he's about to hit the golf ball. Dustin Johnson, about the same time, right thigh, middle of the middle of the grip begins to rise. Rory McIlroy, middle of the grip, starts to rise right around his right thigh. You see how all of those are very similar? Yep. Okay, it's the start of a pattern. Okay. Now let me show you how that works the rest of the way. So all of them do it. And let's even do Jamie Sedlowski. Here's the longest hitter in golf. Middle of the grip near his right thigh, and then it has to start to rise. Well, I, I have yet to ever hear someone say that that uh, the first thing you should learn is how to do the follow through when you learn to play golf or when you're struggling. I think this is usually the biggest problem people have um, that they don't really understand how to move through the ball. So understanding this pattern, this is where the grip needs to get the lowest. And now somehow you have to make it rise as you can see on this trend in here. As these guys do that. This part's important because this is why you need to do that. So on the way down, I'm saying the lowest point of the grip is somewhere right around here. And then it starts to go upward. You need that because at the as you make your backswing, you start at a dress, take away the golf ball and the look of me even standing on the ground. I have an angle between the shaft and my left arm. On the way back, that changes. It almost goes to 90 degrees. Yep. That's what you do at the top of the swing. Then on the way down, most people tend to actually increase or decrease that angle even more. So now the angle between my left forearm and the shaft is, say, closer to 70 degrees. That's about how I'd model it out when your left arm's parallel to the ground. Okay, but you don't keep it that way. On the way down the rest of the way, it starts to, you uncock your wrist, you ulnar deviate, you start to make that angle between your left arm and the shaft greater and greater and greater. So now I've got a pretty obtuse angle in here. You do that because there's some element of swinging faster that way that lets the club head start moving quicker as that comes out. Now, a lot of people do this way too soon. So that's a, maybe for another day, but it is changing. Now you might notice too that as I continue to do this, how much further the club gets away from me. So as I'm uncocking my wrists like this and ultimately hitting a ball about where my wrists were when they started at a dress, the distance the club is from me is getting greater. So before I hit the golf ball to help counteract that, the middle of the grip needs to start to go upward to accommodate that extra length that you're adding to the stroke. Good okay. so far? Yep. So if at the bottom of the swing, I had the shaft parallel to the ground or a little past it, like you saw those people, and I didn't ra raise it up at all, the club is too close to the ground. And ultimately, if my hand was the golf ball where I want to hit, I would start hitting so far behind it that I couldn't even hit the golf ball first. Not to mention the angle that my club is going down would be tremendously down. So that's the significance of how to do that. You're essentially doing like a smaller version of what I am. The club's really close to the ground. As you uncock your wrist, you raise the grip end up, and that's what shallows out the hit. The best players do that well and do it the fastest. Those are the people that I'm showing you. But the pattern is pretty much always the same. Right about when the middle of the grip gets past, uh, just past parallel to the ground, that's when the butt end of the club has to start going up. The middle of the grip has to start going up. You have to do something different. So, but, so let me so let me ask you this. I would argue that a lot of golfers have really poor low point control. It's a skill that they correct. do not have, right? Correct. Yep. What part of that puzzle do most people miss then? Do they miss the, or which piece? You just tell me that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good question. So first one, or the, the actual answer I would say is that they don't have the grip end of the club far enough forward at impact and they don't have it rising enough. So it's a combination of both of these things. So because I would say there's, I, I, maybe you disagree, but I don't know if there's a trend of more people hit it fat or thin, but they just have poor control in general of where their low point is. Right. Or do you yeah. see a trend yeah. of more people hit it no. fat or people hit it thin? No, I think, I think that's great. So here's uh, let's go maybe back to these beers images. I can do the same thing here. Okay. Here's your move. Harvey's over here snorting. So it's not me. If you hear it, I'm trying not to kick over my track lady there. Okay, so when the grip end of the club gets this close to the ground, this is when the butt or the middle of the grip needs to start to rise. The way that you do that is by physically straightening your legs, straightening your ankles, uh, pushing your hips towards the target, and starting to extend your thorax and everything underneath where you, where you can't see my head. That all has to start to straighten. 
and you do that before you hit. And that's what helps you push the butt end of the club more forward. So it's forward enough when you hit and also makes it rise to alleviate that low point problem or the, the radius of my swing, how much further the club's getting away from me on that little small section of the swing from right here on through the ball. So learning how to not look like a pointer dog where you're bent forward and to help you alleviate the ground contact that was coming early, like that is one way to do it. On the way down, you can basically align yourself like all those tour players you saw, but to help you not hit the ground, people stay bent forward and start pulling their elbows further away from them. Like you're holding yep. a putter, your left wrist extends, and then you end up looking like the pointer dog look that we saw before. Gotcha. So that would be the worst way to do it. And that's what all of those poor uh, golfers are doing. Now, meanwhile, the better ones are putting the grip into the club here. And then you see that PGA tour finish that everyone has on TV. That is a pretty critical part of that. If you don't keep moving the butt end of the club forward and the middle of the grip forward while it rises, you ultimately get to that point. I think you're trying to make, which is you can raise the grip, but if you don't push it forward, you have the same problem of hitting the ground behind the ball. This even happens to like some of the best tour players, but going even a step further, this one is uh, Bryson DeChambeau. So I'm going to take him all the way through to where his right arm is parallel to the ground. And I want to watch a couple trends with you. So he's got the same thing. The middle of the grips about where his right thigh is. It's going to start to go up. The measurement on here I want to pay attention to is the flex of his elbows. So he's got his left elbow is flexed about 21 degrees. So maybe I'll just demonstrate that like this. His right elbow is flexed more, it's closer to 50 degrees. Hard for me to do both of those at the same time, but something-ish like that. Let's go to the next screen. This is when he hits the golf ball. His left elbow went from 20 degrees to 16 degrees. It's straightening, straightened out five degrees in there. His right elbow went from 52 to 35. Both of them are straightening. That is pretty typical of every single PGA Tour player that I've been able to measure on here so far that I've seen is that the uh, uh, both of their arms are straightening on that little small part of the swing where I'm trying to describe the grip needs to start going up. Now you got another problem in here, Cordy. You have the club uncocking in your wrists. You have the elbows straightening. Everything's trying to get longer and further away from you. So that's where it becomes so critical to learn to move yourself backward while you keep turning through the shot so that you can accommodate both of those things. If you don't know how to do that right away, you have given yourself zero chance to go out there and hit the ground in the right spot and start hitting the ball far. You just, you've eliminated it all. You have no shot. So by not learning that very quickly in your development as a golfer or understanding that at least that that happens as a good player, you, you literally don't have a chance. You could practice the rest of your swing for as long as you want. And if you violate those rules that are never talked about, never explained, that we just went through, you will be terrible at golf. And you cannot stop that until you understand or learn how to do that. And a lot of people get that, that pattern of motion through trial and error. Or they're just really good at it inherently. Their motor program, they make a swing and they just do it very well. But most people don't do this very well. That's why I showed that image just in the very beginning. Let's talk feel versus real because um, it definitely in my golf swing doesn't feel like uh, my hand path is going up at the point that it probably is. I would guess that it, I'm hopefully somewhere around here, right? But it does, yeah. definitely doesn't feel like that. Right. No, I don't think this is uh, something and that, that might be just like a, uh, something we could get off on many tangents on what you, what you think you're doing, what you need to actually spend your time worrying about aren't necessarily the same things. So I'd put you in that uh, that group of golfers who does this without having to think about it. So I doubt this is part of your problem, but a rank beginner that might walk in or someone who shoots in the 90s or 100, um, chances are really good that they don't do this part well enough or they don't raise the middle of the grip fast enough or soon enough or maybe at all. So that's where it becomes important. It's not for just your best golfers, although they can struggle with this too. And we'll look at some tour player friends of mine that practice doing this better it seems it seems counterintuitive right because most uh, you know average golfers can't compress a golf ball right and when you think about like how am i really going to compress a golf ball and cover it i can use all these like great terms right like i gotta sure, cover, sure. compress I get it. it yeah and, like you do, you're not thinking about my hand path needs to be coming up at that point right is, is this just driver or is this also iron maybe that's a no question. this this is all of them all of them okay. every single club uh, so 
quick refresher. Let's watch the elbow flex here. 20 degrees with the left elbow. Okay. Next frame, 16 degrees with the left elbow. Here we are after impact. Here's the shaft. You can see that's a, it's traveled a couple, the club has traveled a couple feet after impact and the left elbow and the right elbow. I stopped talking about the right, but both of them are straightening out. So that would be something that if you're, if you're struggling with hitting your ground, first thing I would do is tell you to keep trying to hit these shots and then into your follow through, try to keep your arms relatively rigid, straight. It's really hard on these measurement systems to actually get zero degrees of elbow flex because even as my arm is as straight as I can get it, I still have some degree where uh, my bicep and the rest of the tendons in here aren't actually letting me straighten out my humerus relative to my forearm all the way. I still have a degree of bend, even though I'm trying to keep it as straight as I can. That's what I would attest to Bryson DeChambeau in this picture, whose left arm is measured at nine degrees uh, of flex. It is basically as straight as he can keep it. But the golfers that we see who come in and struggle all the time, as they get to a point in time where their arms should be straightening, they're actually using a different pattern of flexing their elbows, and then that's shrinking up for the distance they are from the ball and making it harder to swing fast that way and hitting a lot of the top shots that you see. So it's the combo of uh, bend yourself backward, straighten your arms out, and then don't be nervous about in the follow through just continuing to stretch the shaft out away from you as opposed to bending it towards you really quickly. Those would be really good uh, points of emphasis to practice if you struggle with hitting the ground in the right spot. What about, I'm, I'm obviously always looking for the exception here, right? What about, what about Jordan Spieth, right? Sure. His left, yeah. his left arm, his left elbow maintains some angle, right? Yeah, yeah. So th I think that's a really nice, it's, as much as Jordan Spieth might uh, sound like he's violating my rules, I'm really not suggesting that. So first, he's really good at hitting the ground in the right spot. This technique probably isn't much different than uh, what I'm explaining from the bendward, backward bending and the straightening legs, straightening ankles and raising your pelvis up and moving that towards the target. All of that he's doing the same. He may have a few more degrees of elbow bend than the rest of the tour players that I've just shown there. However, I really like that as a mechanism to help him because he does have a, a significantly turned left hand grip. When he gets near the golf ball and he's trying to push the handle forward, he's also encouraging himself to twist this thing as much as he can and come through the shot with a really rapidly closing club face and the predictability of the start line and stuff. Hitting the shot and keeping his left elbow flexed and still facing the target is a really nice way for him to not let the club head twist through the shot. I don't think it's necessary, but I do actually think that's a pretty interesting way to try to play golf. I wouldn't, I don't teach a lot of people to do anything like that, but it works just fine. And I, and I like the way he's trying to do that. All right. I got another one. I got all the questions today. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. So you talk about um, going up and this is straight, yep. right? So, but am I not supposed to maintain my angles through, yeah, great. through great. here and, main, and maintain my posture, right? Like I grew up and I think a lot of us have a, yeah. Hey, don't, you know, you got to maintain that posture, keep your butt out against the chair, um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Let's see how well we can do this in a modified version here. So you're explaining like on the way down and as I hit, that I want to keep my, uh, my pelvis or my butt basically on that chair right. for as long as you can through the shot. Well, that's how I would hit. Like here's essentially my swing. So I'm basically abiding by that same rule you're saying. But what I'm doing is uh, adding the detail of how you need to move to do that. So first, when you hit the ball, let's talk about how you would hit that with impact. You notice how my shoulders are tilted to the right pretty significantly? Yep. And then as I continue to turn through the shot, they'll still stay tilted to the right. Yep. So my right shoulder's lower than my left. I haven't done my normal swing with anything else, but that tilt is there. That's the beginning as you tilt yourself to the right of trying to keep yourself from pushing your head against the wall or away from that wall or losing your inclination to the ground is the tilting to the right through the shot is what keeps you bent over. Now, the people who do that on the way down, you're tilted to the right slightly at this point in time, but you want to increase that right tilt all the way through the shot until your right arm's parallel to the ground. You're always side bending yourself this way through the ball. So while you're doing that, you might notice like the level of my head relative to what you can see there. You notice how that goes down when I tilt to the right? That's helping me accommodate the fact that I'm going from this forward bend and bending backward. If I do both of those at rates that, uh, that match up, 
pretty well, then I don't have the lose your inclination to the ground piece. So it's not just turning through these shots. And it's important that people don't actually worry too much about how much you're turning. It's like the last thing you need to do. You need to make sure that you're tilting yourself to the right or to the left appropriately to match how much of that forward and backward bend you have. So while you saw me make a swing where my hips and my butt stayed on this chair, here's what my follow through looks like. And I, from this view, you can't tell that I'm any, uh, from here you can see like my, my uh, the back of my pelvis all the way up to my neck and how I'm stretching backward. But you don't see that from this view because I'm tilted over at the same time that I'm doing both of those things. So both of those are critical to having you uh, control your inclination to the ground, which was your main question. And then the, the follow-up to that is uh, who should worry about that, which I think is what a lot of your questions are really about. Who, who should worry about this? The people who struggle with hitting the ground in the right spot should worry about it the most. If you're not having that problem, then knowing what I'm saying and understanding that, being able to digest it and, and comprehend that that happens, you're changing your, your tilting to the left and right, you're changing your forward, backward bend. That's good to know, but it might not pertain whatsoever to what you should go practice. So you shouldn't right now be running out there and practicing bending backward more. If you're already playing well, that might not have anything to do with why you're uh, with helping you out. I, I love you brought up spine tilt. It reminds me, uh, one of my good friends, Jackson Court, he's down at uh, Frederica Golf Club. Um, he, We were talking about that a little bit, and I struggle with uh, forgetting in the setup, honestly, just to put some spine tilt in, in there. Um, and I really struggle when I don't. So it's very interesting you bring that up and, and kind of the impact that that has and why that's so important when getting that some, some of that side bend in. What do you think about some of that pre sit you know, how often do you see people not have enough tilt or in their setup? Yeah, uh, well, quite a bit. Most people do it because it starts with just how you could hold on to the club. So your right hand's lower than your left. That's already presetting some degree of tilt of my shoulders uh, this way as I try to do that in Zoom. So I would, I'd recommend that most people set up with about 20 degrees of the shoulder tilt that I'm demonstrating here. Okay. And then uh, closer to about six or zero, even with your, with your hips would be fine. So uh, if you start to put your right hand more on top of the club than your left, or you just move it as I am, where you have like the, the term of the weaker grip, you start putting your index finger of your uh, trail hand more on top of the shaft, that takes the shoulder tilt out. So that can have some effect to it. If I just for whatever reason decide that I wanna aim my shoulders more to the left at a dress, that generally starts dragging some of that rightward tilt out and starts making it more leftward. So you could have a combo of a host of different ways to do that. So that same tilt that you have at a dress is really what I'm asking most people to do when the shaft's parallel to the ground. And then that 21 to the right shoulder tilt that I'm demonstrating now actually moves to 49 to the right. My right arm's parallel to the ground. So there's a good 28 degrees of side tilt that's happening on the way down from here to here. It's not talked about that much, that quantifiable very often in many books or DVDs, or you won't find that lesson on uh, Instagram looking for golf help, but that's a, a same thing. It kind of ties back into how do you move this grip the way that we described it. As it keeps moving forward, you keep tilting yourself to the right and it goes up. So all, all of those are tied together. It can be really complicated, but at least it starts with, can you uh, first understand that this is the lowest point and then it's gotta go up from there. And everything else we've talked about is how to write, how to make it raise from there. That was some excellent tilting, Nick. Great work. It was good. You approve? Yeah. yeah what, was, what did I do wrong? I must have done something wrong. You're very judgmental and I, hard on me. I didn't do anything wrong. You demonstrated that perfectly with clear data, great explanations. I feel like we're doing a live story. review right now of your, yeah. of your work. Is this like a performance review? No, I like when, well, maybe. I like actually when people ask me all these questions. I don't get to talk about golf in that sort of detail enough. And even now I'm starting to drop some words as my, uh, uh, I don't think about this nearly as much as I, as I have in the past. So it's fun to talk about the actual measurements and how they happen and where you want to put this grip and why it moved a certain way. And that talk of ground reaction forces and how that actually is um, the kinematics that lead into that. So the amount that I'm talking about bending backward, where I'm putting my pelvis, how much I'm tilting to the right, that even though people don't want to hear it is actually 
um, what is making those kinematic kinetics actually happen and making the ground reaction forces happen. Although I'm saying that differently than than uh, the scientific definition of how kinetics happen. Um, it is how you move yourself that matters. It is not uh, trying to chase a, a ground reaction force um, diagram around. I'm not ignoring you. I'm trying to find a video of my swing. I want to see day. the get yeah. some tilts in there. Uh, where are those? You know, when we looked at, uh, you should show the, the swing of your son too. If you oh, yeah. That. That's the one. So you showed me a down the line view of that. And you can start when the shaft's parallel to the ground. That's basically what we're talking about, what he's doing there. So he has got uh, a bunch of unique properties in there that he's, that would help him hit the ball straighter. He's hitting all these shots and they curve to the right. And I know we looked at that for one second uh, earlier, yeah. but uh, uh, you, you can teach up. him how to close the face of the path and swing more to the right. But watch the way that he moves. Now, first, you've got him bent forward about as much as you can. And then he, as he, he comes was a little excited, shot, so we didn't get the back <laughs> on this one. So <laughs> watch how he bends, how his knee flex changes. Here you go. He's shot. Seen. Watching that thing. That's how he's able to shallow out that hit, whether he could tell you or not. Because when you go to the Here's beginning that. of that video, Cordy, you over the fence, right. it's farther than you can hit it. We'll go to the <laughs> beginning. Now you notice how he is ready to smash that club into the ground if he doesn't do something. So yeah, himself how to straighten his legs and extend his back. Uh, is that mechanism to help him shallow out the hit. And it relates to all sorts of, uh, of different um, parts of the swing. So check this one out. I think I've got this in here. Yeah. Let's see. I want to see. Another one? Okay. One. I got another one. This is a different angle. Yeah. <laughs> but here you go. So you got the same thing. He borrowed those clubs from you? He did, yep. Yeah. This is a seven iron of mine. Uh, and yeah, there you go. Thanks. Look at that. His right arm is straightening through the shot. His left is straightening through the shot. Got a lot of that thing, right? He's got a lot of like the basic movements, which is if there's something that I can tell most people, it would be you can learn how to move yourself around really well and get good at golf. You don't need tons of practice. You need to first understand how you're supposed to be moving yourself around and have your brain be able to uh, comprehend how these, uh, these uh, motions of tilting change and throughout the entire swing. So talking and trying to pull up video I've learned is pretty tricky. You may not be able to hear this. We cannot, but this looks fascinating. No problem. Here's a relatable sport. You see these guys, this is part of uh, the NFL combine of, uh, they have a vertical leap yep. um, requirement really to, to get through this. And they're, they're measuring how high you can jump off the ground. Now you notice how at this point in time, their knees are flexed, their hips are bent forward, their arms are even behind them like that, They're trying to jump as high as they can and use the ground as a platform to move themselves around really fast. So it'd be the equivalent of like your son, it, right at that first frame when you saw him, how bent forward he was and then how much he straightened through the ball. Rory McIlroy is another awesome example of things like that. Um, this is this is how you use the, the ground that sits below your feet to help you move yourself faster. So when you watch people do this, there's an interesting trend as well of how they move themselves around. They start with their arms over their head, legs really straight. Then as they start to uh, uh, prep how to jump, they bend their knees and lower their arms, which then gives them a bigger, uh, uh, more degrees that they need to extend themselves through the shot, which can make them move faster. People who play golf make that same pattern. And then that's a, a significant way to help you raise that middle of the grip. And that gets in, even into the backswing and how you want to move yourself around for that. If you wanted to do your uh, uh, jump as high as you could just off the ground, you wouldn't start with your knees flexed and your arms behind you and stand there for a while. You'd start with your legs pretty straight, like you might at the top of the backswing with your trail leg. Then you'd bend that forward, which would be exemplifying what this video is. Then straighten them both through the ball, and you could move yourself the fastest and apply the most vertical force to the ground and make yourself jump the highest. That's why I think if you really want to hit this golf ball very far in the backswing, if you're trying to keep your right knee bent and shrinking the amount of range of motion, like you see this person has right here, straightens both legs, bends them both, jumps one more time. That you're really making it harder to hit the ball far, which uh, 
still seeing all the time from either uh, brand new coaches that have questions or from even the most experienced coaches trying to keep people's uh, right hip uh, rotated inward about as much as they can and pushing really hard into your, your right quad or into your glute comes up a lot. It's a tough way to start using the turf really hard to extend back through the ball. I want to tackle one question before we go quickly, Nick. Um, you mentioned earlier of how not doing some of these things would cause you to just stick the club, you know, into the ground behind the ball, right? So yeah. someone was asking, what if you're the other way around and then to thin yeah, yeah. It's more? Great question. Oh, if you're, if you're hitting the ball thin, you could still have the same problem. You could do the, uh, the golf tech students I showed in the first video, which is flex your elbow, extend your wrist. That's pulling the grip towards you, which is, the right idea it's just how you went about doing that is is too difficult to time that up and swing very fast so you could hit the top of the ball like this basically using the club like it's moving across a windshield swiping across your hands your hands slow down and the windshield wiper just goes straight across kind of like this one so when you're driving you can think of it as that analogy uh if you do hit the i think that what you're really asking is if what if you start to raise the grip up too soon or you bend yourself backward too soon yeah. well that isn't a uh, you still do the same thing we talked about you have to realize that you didn't get the grip end of the club close enough to the ground, maybe long enough to the ground before you started to bend backward. There's an appropriate time to do that. And you don't want to start bending your shoulders back until the shaft's parallel to the ground or pretty close to that. There aren't too many players that do it different than that. But I do see the, the early extender people uh, that claim to have that problem where they get to the top of their swing and start to bend back soon, too soon. And then that can make it hard to hit the ground in the right spot the error that those people are making is not bending forward long enough. The extending part is correct. You're still supposed to do that. Just don't have the timing and the, uh, the organization in their downswing of when to do that. Right. Awesome. I think that's a good one to end on Nick. This was a great ch chat. Thanks for tackling all my questions. I appreciate it. You're doing awesome. Cordy. All your questions are good. I still oh. appreciate those things, man. And we got to see your new grip. So now you're going to be, uh, like Ben Crenshaw or Brad Faxon out there rolling putts. I can't wait. The problem is what putter does this go on? That is always the biggest issue. I'll be honest. What are you leaning towards? I don't know. I don't know. Do we go? Okay, here you go. This. Harvey will help you decide. This would be a cool, this would be a cool idea. So this is a Scotty Cameron. I don't know what this is. What is it? 5CB. I've got yep. the stability shaft in here. And then we go the wrist lock on the end. Just be like, well, look at that. What a cop. I mean, that would be wild, right? What do you think, Kirby? What do you think? Do we just go all the tech and just throw it all in one? Oh, okay, there we go. He agrees. Yeah, he should totally do that. A little stability shaft and a wrist lock. I mean, I don't know. That would be a, that'd be a combo well, of some sorts. Are you going to go play? Go play golf and tell us how it is tomorrow. I, I'm going to go, yeah. I, I don't know if I'll – next week I'll, I'll give you some feedback. How about that? Okay, I'm ready. So let's do this again tomorrow. What do we uh, – you got Luke tomorrow? We got Luke Curtinin of golf.com coming on. He's going to hang out. We're going to talk some trends in golf instruction and interesting bits and bobs from around this bits landscape. And, bits and bobs. Bits and bobs that we, all, uh, that we all have been seeing as interesting lately. So thanks for hanging out with us today, everybody.